Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to be investigating the ambiguous case of the side-side angle triangle when solving triangles. So the information that's been provided to us in this problem is that the angle alpha is equal to 69 degrees, A is equal to 86 feet, and B is equal to 91 feet. Now first thing that I'm going to encourage everyone to do is to come up with a little template for where our answer is going to be where we list all three angles and we list all three sides all together so that we can kind of organize our, uh, our data in an orderly fashion. Now, in addition, I'm going to fill in this template with the information that's been given to us in the problem. We know that the side lengths are given in feet, so we'll just express them as numbers for now, and we'll say A is 86 and B is 91, with alpha being equal to 69 degrees. Now, important pieces of information that we've got about this. We haven't necessarily figured out that this is the side-side angle case, so I would also encourage you to draw a little triangle and say if this is the information that's been given to us, how do we tell that it is a side-side angle case? Uh, we've been given alpha, we've been given A, and we've been given B. And if we follow that information around the exterior of the triangle, we pass through a side, then a side, then an angle. And that is how we can tell that this is the case of side-side angle. All right, now, with, the, with that in mind, we know that if we find an angle, we'll have to also potentially find 180 degrees minus that angle, just in case it works. Now, I also notice that B is larger than A in this triangle, and the piece of information that tells me is that the angle beta is going to be larger than the angle alpha. Again, we'll use that to our advantage. Now we don't have two angle measures, so we can't immediately say that the uh, sum of the measures is equal to 180. So instead we'll proceed straight to the law of sines. And the law of sines tells us that the sine of alpha divided by A is equal to the sine of beta divided by B. Now if we were to solve that for our variable, and our variable in this case is the one piece of information that we don't have, that would be beta, we can solve this for beta by multiplying both sides by b. And we'll say that we have b times the sine of alpha divided by a. Now, plugging in the information that we know from what was given in the problem, this is 91 times the sine of 69 degrees all over 86. This is where a calculator is going to come in awfully handy because we are trying to calculate the inverse sine of 91 times the sine of 69 degrees divided by 86. 86. There we go. Now this is where a calculator is going to come in handy. Now I took the liberty of bringing along my TI-84 plus CE that I just purchased earlier today. Getting a little reflection from the overhead lights. So let's do this. Good stuff. Screen is backlit. It's really a fine piece of equipment right here. Uh, you know, if TIA wants to throw a little money my way for advertising their calculator for free. Uh, first thing I want to do is make sure that my calculator is in the proper degree. I got to this menu through the mode menu on the calculator. It says mode right next to second. And be sure that degree is highlighted. Once your cursor is on top of delete, you can press enter to highlight it. Now it believes that any time I input an angle, that the angle is measured in degrees rather than radians. This is why it tells me that the sine of 90 is equal to 1. Now back to the task at hand, we're interested in doing the inverse sine of 91 times the sine of 69, again, it assumes that is now in degrees, divided by 86. This is our first possible angle measure. I'm going to say, let's go ahead and round that to the first decimal place. Uh, we'll do two decimal places, so 81.06 degrees. Now, we know for certain that this is a possible answer for beta, so I'm going to go ahead and write it in. This was 81.06 degrees. Now because this is the side-side angle case and we use the law of sines to calculate what an angle was, we need to test. We're not 100% sure that it's going to work, but we need to do 180 degrees minus that angle that we just found. Now to save us a step on the calculator, I'm recopying it in my notes because I'm super thorough and stuff, but to save yourself some time in the calculator, you can simply type in 180 minus second, followed by the minus sign, and that'll give you 180 minus whatever your 
last answer was. We see that the calculator spits out approximately 98.94 if we round to the nearest hundredth. Now the question is, does it work? So with that in mind, for both of these angles, we're going to calculate what gamma would be equal to. Now, for purposes, uh, this is called the ambiguous case because there's more than one possibility. For purposes of disambiguation, use that with word with friends, words with friends, so the great word, disambiguation. It means um, getting rid of the ambiguity. It's uh, clarifying. That's a fancier, fancier word for that. We'll call them beta 1 and beta 2 for the time being. We know beta 1 is going to work. So I'm going to calculate gamma 1. It's going to be 180 degrees minus alpha minus beta 1. Now for that I can simply turn back to the calculator because we know that that's 180 minus our angle alpha was 69 degrees so we'll subtract 69 and beta 1 was 81.06. This tells me that gamma is equal to 29.94. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that triangle. In fact, it works out quite well. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my known information up top here as well. This would be 29.94 degrees. This also tells me that alpha is the middle angle, A will be the middle side, beta is the largest angle, B will be the largest side, gamma is the smallest angle, so C will be the smallest side. Now at this point you have all five pieces of information except for one side. At that point we can turn either to the law of sines or to the law of cosines. Uh, I prefer law of sines in a case like this, so we'll say use law of sines to find C. Now, when you have all of these pieces of information all together, uh, it, it doesn't really matter whether you use A and alpha or B and beta, but because beta was a rounded answer, I'm going to go back to using uh, alpha for this calculation. So sine of alpha over A is going to be equal to sine of gamma over C. A little bit of algebra tells us that C is going to be equal to A times the sine of gamma over the sine of alpha. Now it's simply a matter of plugging in all of the pieces of information that I know. I know from up top that A is equal to 86. I know that um, gamma that was equal to 29.94 degrees degrees and alpha was equal to 69 degrees. At this point I can turn back to the graphing calculator and say hey figure out that thing times the sine 29.94 divided by the sine of 69 degrees. Again we'll round this off to two decimal places just to be safe. We'll say that this is approximately 45 point uh, we'll round that up so 9, 8. Now back in the original problem it told us that everything was in feet so we'll throw in feet here as well. So putting it all together C we just said was equal to 45.98. So this is the triangle that we are guaranteed from the law of sines. Now the triangle, oh hey, I'll bet you'd like to see that thing too. This is the triangle that is guaranteed from the law of sines. The triangle that is not necessarily guaranteed that we need to test is going to be the triangle that we get from beta 2. So with that in mind, let me find some more paper here and let's investigate the possibility of beta 2. So recopying the information that we know at this point we know alpha is 69 degrees. We were given that information. We know that A is 86. We were given that. B is 91. We were given that. Now I want to check to see if beta 2 will get us a triangle. From my calculation back here, when we did 180 degrees minus this, we got 98.94 degrees. 98.94 degrees. So the question is, will that work with all of the other information? Well, at this point of the process, we can pose the same questions that we usually pose when we start a problem like this. Do I have two angles? And the answer is, I certainly do. 
Well then, use the fact that they should all add up to 180 degrees in order to calculate the other two. So that'll be minus 69 degrees minus 98.94. Now this is the step of the process that is not 100% guaranteed. You could potentially wind up with gamma being a negative angle. In a case that gamma is negative, you would have no possible triangle and you would be done with the problem. You got your one guaranteed triangle from the other case. However, when we plug this into the calculator, we see the gamma is equal to 12.06, meaning that there is another triangle possible, which means that our ambiguous case is giving us two possible triangles. Now for the calculation of C, we can do the same thing as what we did on the previous piece of paper, which was use the law of sines to find C. Once again, I'd like to use alpha and A. Use law of sines to find C. So that'll be sine of alpha over A is equal to sine of gamma over C. Doing a little bit of algebra to solve for C tells us once again that C is going to be equal to A times the sine of gamma divided by the sine of alpha. And that looks awfully familiar. In fact, nothing about this process has changed other than the angle measure of gamma. So, let's plug in what we know. This is 86 times the sine of gamma, which is 12.06, divided by the sine of alpha, which is sine of 69 degrees. Once again, we're going to toss that all into the graphing calculator. 86 times sine 12.06 divided by sine of 69 degrees. It tells us that our answer, if we were to round to the second decimal place, is approximately 19.25. And again, this is measured in feet, as is given in the problem. So this gives us not one, but two possible triangles. So our two possible final answers for this problem oops, are listed right here. First possibility, this is the triangle that was guaranteed. And this is the triangle that could have been or could not have been our numbers tell us that it is. So, two possible answers for this one. I hope this helps clear things up for you, and I'll see you next video.